I'm Kisei, I am a marine ecologist, and I'm here to talk about the stock assessment. Okay. So what exactly is a stock assessment? So it's a synthesis of all, all the like, experts in the same room gathering information on the life history, fishery monitoring uh, resource effort, and the survey data, all this biologist, mathematician, statistician, just throwing their, uh, their opinion together to just make sure the sustainable exploitation of fishery stocks is possible, right? So it's more on just, just counting number of fish in the oceans. So this is uh, the uh, summary of uh, Hillborn and Walter, uh, Walters from 1992. Right, that's a beautiful summary. But as an ecologist, there's one key word missing in the summary. So that's a, that's the environment, right? It's not because this the uh, uh, these um, famous stock assessment scientists did not consider about the environment back then. It's more of the dynamic. Uh, the, this the uh, assumption they had is that this environment, they, uh, there's uh, the water ocean warming, ocean cooling, but they always they thought it's gonna be comes comes down to the the, the, the environment is at the equilibrium, right? So it's not really like the the, the, the environment is changing. Only things that affects these the uh, fishery population dynamics is just the uh, the internal variability in the population within, right? So we all know those the climate change keynote keynote talks and all the stuff, the ocean warming, environment is actually changing, right? So that kind of violates this key assumption of traditional stock assessment, right? Environment is not at equilibrium, but it's actually shifting from one uh, state to another. So what happens to this traditional stock assessment who only focuses on harvesting rate and stock biomass? And as this paper that came out in 2015, as you maybe, many of you may have read, right? about 2% of global fish stocks actually considers any type of environmental information incorporated in a stock assessment, right? So if this stock assessment only focused on uh, just the harvesting rate and stock biomass, right? Oftentimes results in this like, pro uh, like pro problematic bias perception of this stock status and, and over time, which potentially leads to this ineffective <coughs> management of fishery stocks. So. My research, part of my research focuses on how this type of environmental information can be incorporated in fishery stock assessment. So I developed a new stock assessment model that can account for change in the environment, then change in temperature, change in salinity, change in any, any other uh, key par parameters and oceanographies, and how this the targeted fishery stocks can be affected by these type of changing environment. So this new stock system model has been developed and tested for this American lobster fishery in the United States, which is currently the largest fishery at, at the landing, total landing is about $500 million US dollars in 2018. And then Gulf of Maine, as some of you may know, that's the center of Northwest uh, ocean warming, warming much faster than the rest of the global, global oceans. 95% uh, of uh, this landing comes from just a single region in Gulf of Maine. So we wanted to test this, the new stock assessment model that can account for environmental changes with this very commercially valuable fish stocks, lobster, right? So what we found out is that, that when we incorporated what we call the climate change impact on lobster life histories, we saw this interesting thing happen in this two key outcome of the stock assessments, right? One is, the, one is this left panel recruitment, number of fish coming into the fisheries was actually much higher than what we thought before we incorporate for the change in temperature or salinities, right? At the same time, this left panel, fishing mortality, is the rate of the re fish removal due to the fishing, was actually slightly lower just because there's the more fish coming in to the fisheries. So these are the interesting findings, uh, and the, what we found is this new model has been going through the peer review process and it has been actually officially accepted by no fishery scientists and then regional managers and be a part of the next benchmark assessment for lobster fisheries. So um, I'm a modeler, so this type of opportunity that may allows me to work with the resource manager much more closely is, is very valuable and it just, uh, it's, it's really nice outcomes. So that's my talk today, thank you.